Hey, what's up everybody? Adobe Masters here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to add camera movements in Adobe Premiere Pro. So these are going to be sort of fake created camera movements. We're going to be animating the position and the scale of these pieces of footage so that we can create these fake, you know, tilts and pans and stuff like that. We're going to be going over two different methods, which is the first one is going to be like if you have 4K or 2.7K footage, you can actually kind of scale the sequence down to 1080p or 720p, and it'll give you a lot of room to zoom in, do the tilts, the pans, and everything, and it'll look really, really high definition, and you can frame it up nicely. Then we're going to be going over if you have like a 1080p or 720p you know, a uh, piece of footage and you don't want to actually scale that down. So there's two sort of separate methods because the first one gives us a lot of wiggle room. The second one, you have to be a lot more careful with it to sort of get it right. So let's get started. We're going to go start with the 4K footage right here. So I have this 4K footage. I'm going to drag it in and create a new sequence. It's going to do all the settings for us. And so now if we go up into the sequence settings, we will see that up here it is in 4K format. That's what these really, really large numbers are. But we don't want it in that format. What we want it in is 1080p. So if I go up here, I can do 1920. If I can type here, 1920 by 1080. And so what this is doing is it's setting the composition back down to a 1080p composition, which is perfectly fine, high definition, it's going to look great sort of composition. But what it does is it removes that 4K aspect to it. And that gives us a lot of power over the composition because nowadays the monitors still aren't powerful enough. The TVs are hardly, you know, just getting to the 4K. So we don't need 4K for everything. So we can do this drop down, still have HD footage and have a lot of room. And what I mean by room is if you notice, I can zoom this all the way down to 50, about 50 right there. Yeah. And I have this whole composition, this whole footage in frame, which means I can go up to like 179 and you'll notice that it still actually looks pretty good. You'll only start to see just a little bit of sort of um, fracturing in the the, uh, the pixels. Now, for example, uh, let me go ahead and mute that. Hold Alt, click on there, delete that out. For example, this one, this one is right now at, what do we go up to? 170. Let's take this one up to 170 and see how good it looks right about there. You'll start noticing that this looks a whole lot worse. The lines are really, really jagged um, and just sort of blurry. And I mean, we can go up to like 270. Now you can really start to see the effects here. But if we go up to maybe 270 on this one, it's still looking pretty good. The lines are still actually pretty solid. And why is that? That's because in this one, we have a whole lot more information. This is still a 4K piece of footage. What that means is that it still has four times the amount of pixels when we're zooming it in and doing all of our little calculations, which means we can kind of stretch it and move it a lot more than we can a normal piece of footage. This gives us a huge advantage because now we have this all this framing to work with. So we can add fake camera movements really, really simply. So let's start off. Let's go back down to the 50. This is our sort of normal footage and let's zoom it in just a touch to maybe right there. Let's move this on over and now we can just do a simple sort of pan from left to right. If I go to the very left side, I go up here to position and I turn on the animation keyframe. I can then move forward maybe, let's see, 10 seconds or so and then I can move it over to the other edge, make sure that the black doesn't appear and now what we have is just a nice little fake pan going on. So this perfectly still on a tripod shot now looks like I was panning across, which actually gives some really neat elements because as you can see, this is a time lapse. So you wouldn't normally be able to get this, you know, because you'd have to move the camera at a perfect angle. You would have to have some special equipment. But since it's such a high resolution, I can add this into it and make it look pretty cool. Now we can add a little bit of style and a little bit of flair to this as well. If we go into the scale here, we can move it over to the right side here. And let's make sure that we're right on this keyframe. And we can actually, let's zoom this out and let's move this back over. So now it's moving and zooming out at the same time. So now we can kind of have this sort of pull back effect where it's like we started over here and we're kind of pulling back and moving the camera over to the right. It gives a neat little sort of transition. And now we can do one step further where we just highlight both these on the right. We can right click, go to temporal impolation, and let's easy in them. And now what this does is it's going to give us a nice round edge to this sort of stop. So you see how those that like jagged stop where you could see the motion was stopping. Now watch this. It slows down right there. You can notice it right here. It looks like, like we kind of stopped the pan. So we can use this to sort of open up the shot and we can make this a whole lot quicker. So maybe we want it to start off really, really quickly. 
with this, and you'll see that it kind of comes up and then slows down into this shot right here. And you know we can keep the camera movements going. Uh, we could create two additional keyframes here, and then move forward. And let's say we wanted to like zoom in down on this car over here. Like maybe that's kind of how we wanted the scene to go. So we can kind of mess around with it here. Now let's see how this works. So you know, it starts off, it zooms over, slows itself down. Then we have like sort of the whole, uh, the whole scene here. And then we can start to zoom down in on, in on this car. And then, you know, we could have a cut and maybe it'd be inside the car or something like that. But that is kind of how you'd add fake camera movements. What's great about this 4K footage is we can zoom it in, we can do all this fun stuff, and it still looks high definition. If we put it on a TV, it's still going to look HD on there. So we have a lot of room, and we can just really add anything that we want to it, just from really scale and position. You could add, like, rotation and stuff in there, because once you zoom in far enough, like down here, we could take the rotation and rotate it as well, but that kind of gets disorienting and you kind of have to be really careful with that. But like I said, it's there. We have a lot of data. We can do a lot of stuff. So that's how you'd work on a 4K footage. Now let's delete this out of here and let's drag in our other piece of footage. And we're going to go ahead and change the sequence settings here and do the exact same thing. We're going to delete the audio out here. And so now we can't do as hard of a zoom as we could in the other one. So you see that I've already added sort of a natural pan up. That's just because I can't hold it very steady by just holding it. So it's got a little camera shake on it. But let's say we wanted to kind of have it move left to right here. Maybe we wanted just a slight tilt and a slight pan. When you get to this, basically your max limit of zooming in is going to be 115%. So you're not going to have as much of as much space as you might with the 4K footage, but you could still sort of get away with it. So we can kind of bump that up to maybe let's let's kind of like stretch this up to 120. And now with just 120, we have just a little bit of movement we can go and add a little bit of fake camera to the left and right. So let's get it to the very edge over here. We're gonna click the position here, and then we'll move forward again eight or so seconds and then we'll move it to the other side. And we can't go as extreme as we could in the 4K, but we can still get this nice sort of left to right pan going. And now when we click play here, you'll notice that it sort of looks like it was on a tripod or something and I was moving it to the right over here. Very, very subtle effect, but you can still add that camera movement in there. And as you notice, the footage didn't drop quality that much. We're only zooming it in just a little bit. We're just pushing it really to the, the, the depths as far as it can go without looking bad. And that's where we're going to need to work on a piece of footage that is the same um, dimensions as the sequence we're working in. So you can see we got this really neat sort of tilt here. And we can actually move this up too because if it zooms in, we're going to have a little bit of space here on the top. If we like go, whoops, maybe like 10%, you might be able to see that a little bit better. So you can see the scale. We have a little bit of room here and a little bit of room there. So if we want to add a little bit more, we could go to this keyframe and we got a little bit of space up and down. So let's let's bring it up some as well, right up to the tip. We'll go back to fit. And you can see that there's the line. It goes right across over there. Click play. And now we have this sort of nice pan going from bottom left to top right gives it a little sort of a fun motion to it and i kind of like the reason i went this direction is because the water is flowing bottom right or bottom left to top right so it just looks it feels good it feels like the motion of the camera is following the motion of the uh, scene itself and so that's kind of it on the this aspect it's almost identical to 4K, except you just got to understand you have a limit. You have an upper limit here of about 120. After that, you're going to start getting some pixelation and some really noticeable effects. If someone was really looking, they could probably see that this is a little pixelated. But, you know, I mean, if you throw this every, you know, every once in a while, a couple of these shots in, it's not going to be that noticeable, and you can get away with it if you keep it under 120 and preferably under 115. That is going to be it on this tutorial. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. If you have any questions or comments, throw them in the comment section below. I'll try to answer them like I've said in the last couple of videos. There's been some sort of glitches happening on YouTube, so we'll see if that resolves itself. And if it doesn't, if you have a really burning question, go ahead and throw it in that email that I have down there, Adobe Masters Official at gmail.com. I will answer it there. If you want to see more videos similar to this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I will be making a video every other day on Adobe related content, kind of really focusing on Premiere. I kind of want to jump back into After Effects and stuff soon, but I have a lot of fun sort of working with Premiere just because it has a lot of limitations, so you can kind of exploit those and have some fun with them. But that is it. Until next time, guys, see ya.